Hi, Julie Jones from SSB Performance Smarter, Stronger, Better Mindset Training. Here with this week's Mindset Made Simple Tip of the Week, brought to you by Game Day Sportswear and On Point Pest Control. What a weekend it's been. I was just laying in the grass watching the total eclipse, which was awesome, right over Northeast Ohio today. We got to see it in its totality, if you will, in eclipse talk. And we just got off or came out of the Women's Final Four hosted in Cleveland this past weekend. What a great experience. It was awesome to watch Caitlin Clark. It was awesome to watch Dawn Staley and her team go undefeated. And we were in a loge right next door to Megan Rapino. Pretty cool too. But the bottom line is that it was a huge weekend here in Northeast Ohio in Cleveland and beautiful weather to boot, which is not always what you're going to get at this time of the year. But as I was watching this Final Four yesterday, or the championship game yesterday, I was thinking about the pressure that these athletes are under. Think about being one of them. Sellout crowd, 18,300 people. It was packed. Every loge was packed. Every seat was full. The energy was electric. The atmosphere was unbelievable. And like Jason Sudeikis, you know I love Ted Lasso, like his t-shirt said, sitting in the stands, Everyone watches women's sports. And those athletes knew that everyone was watching them on the biggest stage with a national championship on the line. How do they do it? How do they get themselves in that mindset to be able to play at their best on the biggest stage in the game? Well, they all know how to do it and they all do it so well. Ice in their veins so many times. They kept their composure, even when Don Staley was in the referee's ear over and over and over about fouls, still keeping their composure. And we know that one way that all champions can help manage their emotion, manage their anxiety, manage whatever they're feeling is through managing their breath. It's something we can all do. Yes, we all breathe. Don't do it too long, you're in big trouble. But how do we breathe? And how does that how, however we're breathing, affect our performance? I learned a lot about breathing in the month of March when half my lung was full of pneumonia. One thing I really learned was that my whoop band was screaming at me that my respiratory rate was so high, my heart rate was elevated, obviously my skin temperature was elevated, but what I concluded or what I thought about really when I was looking at all these red numbers in my whoop readout was that I couldn't think. And I tied it back to, obviously I was sick, but my respiratory rate was so high that everything else was so elevated that my brain waves weren't even working. The whoop doesn't measure those, but I can tell you that they were not working. I couldn't put sentences together some days. I really wanted to work, but it was almost impossible. So I started really thinking about our breathing and how vital it is to our emotional state to our thinking state, to our performance. Now, I want you to think about this. Think about your favorite player at the foul line, walking up to the plate. What do they do? We know that a lot of them take a deep breath before they perform. But my question is, are they really taking a deep breath when they're doing that? Because what I see is I see a lot of girls get their bat and they're looking up at the Easton or the Rawlings or whatever's on it, and I see them do this. Shoulders up and down. Or you're watching, taking your three dribbles up, shoulders up and down. Well, that's a good start. We're, we're pausing. We're managing our, our pace. We have a routine. And all that's good. And I even thought about it like, okay, well, maybe they're getting some sort of relaxation as they go up and they go down. Because what I know for a fact is they're not filling their lungs completely. They are not getting the full benefit of a deep down belly breath, as one of my athletes said on a call a couple weeks ago when I was working with a team on reminding them how they can manage their emotion. But this up and down motion, according to the Mayo Clinic, they say this, that chest breathing, which is this, right? Chest breathing activates accessory respiratory muscles that tighten the neck, chest, and vocal cords and can trigger a fight or flight reflex. So as I'm thinking, okay, well, at least they're getting some relaxation as they go. The Mayo Clinic is saying, and I'm not a doctor, so I'm going to go with what they have to say. The Mayo Clinic is saying that we are actually tightening things when we chest breathe. Well, that's exactly what we're trying to get away from. We're trying to 
relax and slow things down by using our breath, slow the game down, slow our brain waves down, slow, lower our blood pressure, slow our heart rate down. So how do we do that? If this, which is what you see and you know you see it, picture it in your head or just watch a game tonight, you'll see that that may be counterproductive to what we're really trying to do. So I thought that we would really dive into this today and think about what it is that we need to do to use the full benefit of our breath. Because here's what happens. When our respiratory rate rises, when it creeps up, some of the air gets stuck in the sacs in our lungs. And there's a technical term for those. But what happens in those little sacs that get a little moist is that's where the oxygen carbon dioxide rate is exchanged. That's where the, the exchange happens. And if we are breathing, when our pressure goes up and our nerves go up or our anxiety goes up and we start to breathe shallowly, whether we're chest breathing or whatever, we're just breathing really shallow, we are not expelling the carbon dioxide that gets stuck in there. And what happens is CO2 levels increase and it signals our brain that something isn't quite right. And we can get agitated or even a little bit stressed out. Hyperventilation or overbreathing also can cause the body to lose too much on the other side. It can, we can lose too much carbon dioxide. And that affects us by making us feel fatigued. It, 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 it adversely affects our endurance. It too can make us feel stressed. It also, either one of these, whether we have too much carbon dioxide or too little carbon dioxide, affects our feelings of control. And if we have too little carbon dioxide, we're not allowed to, we can't, or we're not allowed, well, our body isn't allowed or cannot move enough oxygen into the muscles that we need to move. So either way, breathing too fast or too rapidly or too shallowly when we get stressed out because we're not breathing deeply negatively affects our performance. Even when we think we're doing we're still not getting a full inhale and exhale. So what do we do? This is something we all can learn. We all breathe. We know that. But being able to manage our breath, number one, makes us feel like, okay, hey, I can control something. I can control my breath. I may feel totally out of control and everything around me may seem out of control. But whew, for this second, and there I did it. I did it myself, right? And I even know better, but we pull up instead of going out. We need to be thinking about how we can get deep down belly breaths, diaphragmatic breathing. Dr. Andrew Huberman is all about the physiological side. Breathe in, take another little inhale, uh, inhale, and then breathing it all out. That's a physiological side. Research shows that that is the best way to reduce your stress response. And if you can do it for five minutes a day, you call it cyclic sighing. It outweighs any other type of meditation or mindfulness in effect of allowing you to manage your stress response. Five minutes a day. They say it's the best practice that we can do. But let's talk a little bit about diaphragmatic breathing. What happens? Well, first of all, we need to practice this in times of calm. I often use the analogy that the military does not learn new techniques in war. They learn new techniques here in the United States and they practice them so that then they can go when they're under pressure and they have muscle memory, if you will. They know what to do. They're falling back on their training. We don't rise to occasions. We fall back on training. We need to do the same thing. We need to practice and then we need to practice it in practice and then we need to put it into our performance. But one way that we can tell if we're breathing the right way or in the way that really will enhance our performance is to put one hand on our chest. And obviously you can't do this in the game, but you can do it in practice, laying in your bed, sitting on a chair, whatever, standing right here. And this hand should stay still. The hand that's on my belly should rise and fall. Because what we want is we want to get wider with our breath well, as we're taking a breath in and we want to get back to skinny or whatever our normal state is as we're exhaling and we're tightening those abdominal muscles to exhale all the air out of our breath or out of our lungs. What happens? The diaphragm when we breathe in tightens and goes down, opens up space in the chest, in the chest cavity. Our heart literally enlarges. It allows more 
uh, blood to pump through, our heart rate increases as we breathe in. As we breathe out, the diaphragm relaxes, it comes back up, it, small, it shortens up or it closes up the chest cavity, our heart gets smaller, less blood is going through, our heart rate decreases. That's what we want to get to. When we do this, our heart doesn't change at all. Our heart rate doesn't change at all. Our brain waves don't change at all. Our blood pressure doesn't change. We're getting air in so that we can feel like we're breathing and breathing effectively because you can breathe effectively that way, but we are really not pushing the oxygen all the places that we need it to go to enhance our performance. So let's think about this for a second. We breathe in, belly gets big. We breathe out, belly goes back in. The heart rate changes. And the key is, even in the physiological sigh, is that we breathe in and then we exhale slowly. And as we're exhaling slowly, our heart rate is lowering. And so is everything else around us. Everything is slowing down. Not that we want to slow down to affect our performance or our uh, effort. That's not what I'm getting at. It's slowing it down so that we can think, so that we can see. Literally, when the blood flow changes in our brain, it changes the, our ability to use our periphery or our sight in general. And I don't know about you, but in most things that we play, the sight's really, really important. So this breathing affects so many things. Not only does deep breathing or belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, whatever you want to call it, help us relax, helps us improve our focus, right? It also enhances our posture. It is impossible to breathe fully when we're looking down at our shoes, looking for the answers because we just made a mistake and that's what we do. When we're slouchy, we can't fill up our lungs. So when we are using a deep belly breath, and we're filling our lungs, not only in our belly, but our upper chest as well. We are upright. Our, our chin is upright because that is the best way to bring air into the system. It's really hard to do when we're like this. When, we, when I was coaching, you know, kids always want to lean over when they're tired. And then I said, well, if we're going to lean over, that means we're not in good enough shape. So let's work a little bit harder. Stand up so you can get the air to go to the places that it needs to go. We can even add in a slow breathing practice after we compete, and that can help us with recovery because this deep breathing helps us offload things like lactic acid and all of the, you know, the bad things that, that our muscles sort of expel, and we can, we can help flush those out because we've increased our blood flow, we have more oxygen, the blood is cleaner and healthier through deep breathing, and it can help us restore our muscles back to where they need to be a little bit quicker. But uh, Migalico, I think is how you say it at all, researchers from Italy in uh, peak performance, they list the effects of our respiratory rate on our performance. And I, I, they can say it better than I can, so I'm just going to read these to you. Our breathing rate affects our oxygen delivery. The respiratory rate determines the amount of oxygen that is delivered to the muscles during exercise, which is critical for peak athletic performance. Our breathing rate affects our carbon dioxide elimination. The respiratory rate also determines the amount of carbon dioxide that is eliminated from the body during exercise, which can help us improve our athletic performance. Our breathing rate affects our heart regulation. The respiratory rate can also affect the heart rate, which is important for peak athletic performance and reducing feelings of stress and anxiety during exercise or performance. And then lastly, our breathing rate affects our concentration and focus. The breathing rate can also affect the athlete's focus and concentration during exercise. Controlled rhythmic breathing can help improve focus and concentration allowing for better athletic performance. The bottom line is this, that controlling our breathing can help us manage our stress. But it's not going to happen if you just say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to deep breathe during the game and that's it. Or I'm just going to deep breathe right before this speech or this conversation or the sales pitch. No, we need to practice it. When you're driving down the road and you start to feel a little bit overwhelmed, Practice it there. You're sitting in your car. You can belly breathe right there. <sighs> or breathe in and then exhale long. This simple tool. I just had a kid that I talked to last night that I work with individually. She said, I just felt so relaxed. I'm breathing in, at these points in my performance. And literally, it is changing her ability to feel 
like she's in the state that she needs to be in. It's that simple. It really is. But it takes practice. It takes discipline. It takes a routine. It takes self-awareness to know that, hey, I need to throw a breath in right now. I need to get back to being me. That's me. That controlled breather. I am going to enhance my performance by changing my breathing rate, my respiratory rate, and that's going to help me be better. Again, practice. Slow it down when there's no stress. Add it into practice. Even though there's not as much stress in practice, we have to practice it as part of our routine. And then, and only then, will we get the full benefit of deep down belly breathing. Not up and down breathing, but in and out breathing. And it's going to change our performance. If I can help your team with their breathing or any other routine, reach out, J at sspperformance.com. I hope you have a great week. Until next week, get outside, watch a championship, and watch champions breathe. Because I will promise you that it makes a difference in their performance and in all of ours. Have a great week.